Hey everyone, and welcome to Top Think. Today we're going to learn about persuasion, the psychology of leading people. Now, let's begin. Are you a persuasive person? Do you know how to lead people in your favor? Most people don't understand how persuasion works, so they don't recognize when they're being influenced. They're pushed and pulled by the tides of every conversation. They fall victim to unconscious cues, cognitive biases, and persuasive tricks. Like it or not, the world is full of people trying to persuade you, trying to lead you one way or the other. You may be convinced that you control your behavior, but you don't have as much control as you think. The simple truth is, persuasive people rule the world. They're leaders, artists, and entrepreneurs. They create the trends, concepts, and patterns that define our culture. Because persuasive people don't just create ideas, they use persuasive tools to spread their ideas and change the way people think. When discussing persuasion, many people get suspicious because the world frames persuasion and manipulation as the same thing. Well, why is that? Because both persuasion and manipulation take advantage of people's trust. In every aspect of your life, trust and distrust govern your decisions. You cross the road because you trust that a car will stop at a red light. You lock your front door because you don't trust other people around your belongings. You buy products from a store because you trust that those products aren't going to break. In other words, your entire life is built around trust. Because trust is so important, establishing trust has become a critical skill. To be a salesman, for example, your customers have to trust your advice. To make a friend, you need someone to believe the things you say. If other people are involved, trust can make or break your success. But where does trust come from? Why do we trust some people and not others? At a foundational level, you establish trust by proving that you're trustworthy, by showing people that your words match your actions. Now, of course, that isn't the only way to gain someone's trust. Otherwise, persuasion wouldn't exist. Persuasion and manipulation use subtle cues and special language to create trust. Both persuasion and manipulation establish a trustworthy dynamic with another person, but what do you do with their trust? Do you take advantage or do you follow through? Just imagine this scenario. Your friend asks you for a favor. They need you to drive them across town. Now, you don't want to, but your friend says they'll buy you lunch. This sounds appealing, so you drive your friend across town, and when you get there, you're expecting a nice lunch, but your friend leaves you behind. Now, is this persuasion or manipulation? When you manipulate another person, just think about your goal. You manipulate someone for your own personal gain. You're taking advantage by making them believe something that isn't true. All right, going back to our example, your friend gained your trust by offering to buy you lunch, but they misled you on purpose. They used your trust to take advantage of you and then failed to honor their word. In other words, a manipulative person establishes trust with no intention to follow through. Okay, let's try another example. Now imagine your friend invites you to go camping. You're on the fence, but your friend makes a really convincing argument. Over and over, they tell you how fun this trip is going to be. They tell you about hiking through the mountains, roasting marshmallows, and looking up at the stars. Suddenly, this camping trip feels more appealing, so you say yes. The next weekend, you and your friend go camping. You hike, you roast marshmallows, and you look at the stars. But you also get bitten by mosquitoes, and you struggle to sleep on the rocky ground. Overall, the trip wasn't as fun as your friend said it would be. Is this persuasion or manipulation? This time, your friend is being persuasive, not manipulative. When you persuade someone, you aim for a common goal. This goal works in your favor, but you're not the only one who stands to gain. When being persuasive, you're encouraging a decision that's mutually beneficial. You're establishing trust and reinforcing that trust. Now, looking at our example again, how did your friend get you excited about camping? They gained your trust by highlighting the best experiences. They focused on the most fun activities. Your friend left out the bad stuff, but they never lied. They didn't purposely mislead you, they simply changed their approach. The goal of persuasion is not to take advantage of people. Persuasion uses cues and signals to achieve a common goal. So how do you become a more persuasive person? How do you use persuasion to lead others? Most importantly, what techniques can you use to be persuasive in your daily life? 
For the rest of this video, we're going to talk about five persuasive tricks you can use to lead people without losing their trust. Number one, sources of interest. Persuasive people know that interest is everything. You can't persuade anybody without creating interest. Just think back to our last example. How did your friend change your opinion about camping? They created interest. They talked about activities you'd enjoy. You became interested in those activities, so your interest changed your opinion. Interest can change someone's mind. It can grab their attention or it can hold them back. Interest is the reason anyone listens to you. If you want to be persuasive, develop interest right away. Otherwise, your persuasive tactics will never work. Ah, but what creates interest? What does interest look like? People are the most interested in things that benefit them. It may be profitable, exciting, or even entertaining, but a source of interest will always benefit the other person. To be persuasive, lean into their interest. Emphasize how much or how often they're going to benefit, and when you highlight these points of interest, people are much more likely to say yes. But remember that persuasion is not the same thing as lying. Do not lie to create interest. Otherwise, you're manipulating instead of persuading. Persuasive people build interest by approaching the truth in a clever way. Number two. Core communication. Do confusing concepts and language make you more persuasive? When trying to persuade someone, you should simplify concepts as much as you can. Persuasive people will boil difficult ideas down to their core. They can explain complicated concepts to anyone because they focus only on the things people care about. Just imagine, for example, you're thinking about buying a TV. A salesman may show you a huge list of prices and products. You immediately feel lost, right? But the salesman points to one product and he says, this TV is exactly what you're looking for. And just like that, this salesman reduced a bunch of confusing information into one persuasive idea. Number three, limited additions. This is a common persuasive tool in the world today. Everyone wants something that's one of a kind. Limited edition, rare or unique. Whether it's technology or clothing, we're all looking for some way to stand out. The moment something becomes rare, it gains value and persuasive power. Creating scarcity is easy. You simply offer a smaller quantity, but you have to know when and where to use this trick. Think about the most expensive watches in the world. These watches are exclusive and personalized. Their brand names and unique appearances make them stand out. In other words, their scarcity gives them value. People are willing to spend huge amounts of money on these watches. Why? Because they're buying something no one else has. These watches may be worth a lot less than their price tag. You may find an exact replica for half the price, but the original is rare and scarce, so people are more willing to invest. Number 4. Persuasive imagery. Which is more alarming, the word car crash or an image of an actual car crash? Obviously, the image is more powerful. When you use imagery, your message gains a greater impact, and that makes you more persuasive. So if you want to persuade another person, use imagery to amplify your message. Don't just tell them, show them. Bring your idea to life. When people can visualize your message, you're more likely to make an impact. But what if you can't use pictures or videos? Well, you don't have to use imagery to create imagery. Storytellers, for example, are very persuasive people. They lead others by painting a picture in their minds, creating mental imagery. This mental imagery feels real, so people latch on to their ideas. Number 5. Persistent Fishing Even the most persuasive people run into roadblocks, but they know that persistence pays off. Persuasion can be a long fight. You may lose a few battles, but you only need one yes to win the war. If you're persistent, your only enemy is timing. Timing is one of the most important persuasive tools. You have to catch someone in the right moment or state of mind. If someone is not willing to listen, well, today's not your day. No matter how persuasive you are, your methods will fail. But tomorrow is a new day. Today this person wasn't ready to listen, but tomorrow their eyes and ears may be open and your message may finally stick. So if you're persistent, you'll find the right time. That's why persuasive people try again and again. 
The more shots you take, the more likely you are to hit your target. Just think about all the commercials and advertisements you see on a daily basis. Imagine seeing the same fast food commercial every single day. Time after time, you roll your eyes until one day you're hungry for fast food. When this commercial pops up, it feels like the answer to all your problems. You ignored this commercial day after day, but good timing makes all the difference. Hey, thank you for watching Top Think and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.